And the UK should not be doing that. It should not be engaging in uh, persecution on behalf of a foreign power that is out for revenge. That foreign power that committed crimes which Julian put into the sunlight. Now, according to the King's speech, you want to remove all foreign bases from British soil, you want to scrap nuclear weapons, and go neutral. Not a lie. I will do it by negotiation, not by force. I'm authorized to warn you. If you jeopardize the Western alliance, my government will be forced to regard that as a hostile act. Neutrality equals hostility? Isn't that a peculiar use of the language? Don't misunderstand me. Now, your industry is in a shambles. It's not your fault, it's what you inherited. But you need help to put it back together again. You need dollars. And nothing is for nothing. Go back three spaces, Marcus. The message I'm hearing from you goes like this. If we want the cooperation of the United States, we must change all our policies. Right, well, try this for size. We have an overwhelming mandate from the people in plain language. They are sick of being an aircraft carrier for the United States. Now, what we have in mind is a phased withdrawal over two years. That can't be done. Has to be done. It's the will of the people. There's a former British soldier who served in Afghanistan and lost friends there and in Iraq. I support Jeremy Corbyn's opposition to the wars. I trust Jeremy to keep us safe. We will ensure everyone in work has rights to join a trade union, rights to be represented, rights to holidays, rights to a decency and fair pay. When the steel industry in the UK was put up for sale, one politician gave up his holiday and came to South Wales to support the steel workers. I wasn't really interested in the Labour Party before, but for the first time this is a leader I can really get behind. He's a decent, principled man that seems like he really cares for ordinary people. Do you accept that people are homeless? Do you accept the massive gap between the richest and the poorest? Or do you do something about it? You, the people, must decide whether you prefer to be ruled by an elected government or by people you've never heard of. Do you intend to abolish first-class rail travel as some reports no, have been... No, no. We will abolish second-class rail travel. I think all people are first-class. Don't you? Oh, the first question is, does Iraq possess weapons of mass destruction? People will die because of the BBC decision. Let me be clear about that. And I, I started my life 60 years ago as a BBC producer. I love the BBC. I support it. But it is capitulated to Israeli pressure. But I think people who betray those who gave them power are the real threat, and I must say that bluntly to you because I think that's Assange yeah. took refuge at Ecuador's embassy in London for seven years before British police dragged him out and threw him into a maximum security prison that houses terrorists, murderers and rapists. Nearly three years later, after a sham trial in a kangaroo court, with the flimsy case against Assange thoroughly discredited, Britain's much-vaunted justice system has paved the way for his extradition to the U.S. Two of the men killed worked for the Reuters news agency. are being attacked and uh, it is therefore a very difficult period because to change it would require a liberation struggle comparable to the anti-colonial struggle in Vietnam and in India and in Africa against the old imperial masters. It would be on that scale but if you don't engage in it and think about it and plan it then of course you become entirely serfs in a new feudalism run by bankers and multinationals and so on.